Hey, good morning to y'all. How you doing today? Y'all y'all live and kicking or not? You think you're going to make it or not? Are we going to have church or not? I think we are. Amen. We've had a good, good, good morning already. It was a great first service. It was really, if you, if we, I'm pretty sure if we pull that off again, you're going to go, wow, I like it here. That was a great service. Very, very good. So you're going to enjoy it. My brother Terry is here today, and he's going to preach today. Electrical contractor. You might wonder, well, what does an electrical contractor sound like when he preaches? You're going to find out in just a bit. But uh, it was good. You're going to enjoy it, and you're going to leave going, wow, I didn't, that's a different way to look at that. You know what I mean? But it's going to be good. You'll be encouraged. Would you like to have some good music today? Yes or no? Would you like to have some really great music? Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. And we're doing things a little different. We'll start off with a song up front. But then we're going to have two specials for mamas today, right in the middle. And then they'll finish up with another song at the end. We're going to give you two where you're going to sit down and just let them just minister to you with some great music. And uh, I was thinking, didn't get any better than this today. You'd have to go to Nashville maybe. That's about the way I feel because it, it was as good as it gets right here today. So we're fixing to have a great, great, great service. Anyway, if it's your first time, I'm Pastor Gary. You're at Fellowship Church. In case you're just driving through. Amen. But we're glad you're here. Glad you're here. I'm me. I pastor here. I've been, I started this church years ago with a, about 60 people in my house. We got together and didn't know what we were doing. I'd pastored before, but to start a church, it didn't take any brains to start a church at all. You can get a sign today and go do it. But now to stay with it now, <laughs> that's another story. Amen. And, uh, but God has blessed us. You're in a debt-free ministry here where we don't have to harp about money and make you feel bad. We're just not going to do that. God is a good God. God is faithful. God takes care of us. Amen? And with the crowds we have, there's usually, it's always just fine. Amen? So we're just different. I like being different. Amen? But you're different. Did you know that or not? All right. Are y'all ready for me to hush now? All right. Glad you're here today. Can we on the count of three say Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day really loud? One, two, three. And how about this? We love you on the count of three. One, two, three. We love you. Amen. And you matter. You matter. And you're very valuable. Amen. We're glad you're here today. Jimmy, it's good to see you, buddy boy. I know it ain't easy, son. It's not. It's hard. It's hard what you're going through. How you, is it helping coming here? Very much so. Are you coming to grief as well? Grief share? Is that helping? It is. You'll never leave it. Look at him. He, his wife went on to be to heaven, and that was hard on him. And very, 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 very hard. But Jimmy's been coming. Jimmy's been coming to church and been coming to grief share. And that's what we do. We want to care, man. We want to help you. We want to help you, man. You work in this community. You go out and you do your job and you help other people all week long. He has a job where he goes and puts these things in people's home to help them keep from falling and been doing it for years and uh, but sometimes he's the one that needs help amen so appreciate you buddy good to see you look at this look at this what is this oh, that is my grandbaby hello there hello hello oh what what i do oh oh yeah you're funny you're fun that's what i do hey there this is pop pop I know I'm your favorite. I know, I know, I know, I know. I knew you would be. I knew I'd be your favorite for sure. Well, happy Mother's Day. How many does that make your heart melt, Mama? Let me see. Isn't that good? Come on, that makes your heart melt right there, baby. Yeah, we're the only worship team that has a baby in it. Amen. Come on, let's stand on up. Let's go. Come on. Here's why I talk like I do, guys. If I could be the pastor of this church, that must really help you know that you can come here too. Amen. If I can do this, I don't want you to feel like, well, I can't go to church. I, I, I'm nobody. I'm no. Listen, you're fantastic. God loves you. You're here with us today. We're not going to put you down. We're going to help you. Amen? Yes or no? Amen? But we're not going to lie to you. We're going to preach out of God's word here. Amen? We're going to do it with love. God's so good to us. Let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. Don't give up on your country. Don't give up on your country. Amen? Amen? Are you ready? I'm going to do this right now. We're up. I'm going to move this out of our way so we can see. Amen. 
But thank you. The first song is called Great Are You, Lord. One more time. Let's thank the Lord. We're in church. Let's go. Come on. Here we go. We're in church. Let's go. Thank you, Mitch. Appreciate y'all. God bless you. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great. darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you Lord you give life you are love you bring life to the darkness you give hope, you give hope, you restore, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Is your breath in our lungs? So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise into your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise to your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing, oh how great are you, Lord. Oh, the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing, oh how great are you Lord? And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Oh, how great are you Lord? Come on, church, sing it out loud. Here we go. And all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing oh how great are you Lord? it's your breath it's your breath in our love in our love so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise is your breath in our Pour out our praise to your breath. 
where you're at now you're in church praise the Lord that's where you are it's a different kind of music ain't it yes or no it's just different you're here man you came some of you fought tooth and nail to get here man but you're here I want you to let you let the Lord just uh, fill you up today amen so glad you're here looking forward just to a great time together let's pray together Lord thank you for loving us Lord thank you for loving us first and Lord we love you we love you but you're holy and you're faithful and you're righteous and we're not. And you loved us. You loved us, Lord. You loved us in our sin. And you came to this earth and died on a cross for us so we could be saved, so we could have eternal life. And Lord, thank you for that. You're great. You're great. And we praise your name today, Lord. Thank you for loving folks like us. And Lord, all you have to work with is sinners. It's all you have. All have sinned and come short of your glory. But Lord, you do. You work with us and you care for us and you don't leave us. Lord, thank you for that kind of love today. Lord, we ask you to bless this day. Bless, bless mothers today and ladies and women and little girls today. May they feel that, boy, I'm valued. I matter. Oh, God, help us to do that here. And, uh, Lord, I pray for folks today. If they died, they don't know they'd go to heaven. Lord, they're coming up with all other ways. And, Lord, I pray today that every one of us will know for sure that what you did was sufficient. What you did was right. What you did is the only thing that will work by going to the cross and raising from the dead. Help us to put our faith in you today and not a church or not ourselves, but in you, Jesus. Help us do that today. Oh, God, all of us, please, touch us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be seated if you would, Mr. Alexander Christie. How you doing, buddy? Again, good to see you. Go get him. Thank you, you Pastor. got him the first time. Thank you, Pastor. And good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to Fellowship Church this morning, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We love and appreciate you. We're so glad you're here. And, uh, we, you know, we know you could be anywhere this morning, and you're starting your week off here at Fellowship Church to celebrate Mother's Day with us, and we can't thank you enough for that. So happy Mother's Day, everybody. And if today's your first time here, please do us a favor and fill out that guest registry that's right there in your worship guide that you got when you came in the door. Or you can go out to that welcome center um, after the service and fill out the same basic info. And we promise not to bother you. We just want to send you a note of thanks for being here today. And uh, we also want to send you a postcard whenever a big event is coming up here at the church. So if you don't mind doing that, please do so. And good morning, everyone online, by the way. Uh, we're so glad you tuned in with us this morning. Do us a favor, send us a Facebook message or an email, and we'll do the same thing for you. We have lots of Bible studies going on here at Fellowship Church. If you have not plugged into one yet, I can't encourage you enough to do so. Um, just getting, getting closer to the Lord, getting closer to fellow believers, making some new friends here at the church, and you know, just getting more knowledge of God's Word. And it's a, just a win-win-win across the board. So if you've not, not plugged into one yet, check them out. They're right there in your worship guide, or you can give us a call at the office, and we'll give you any information you might need there. And if anybody here has time on Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m., we meet here at the church and we clean inside here, make everything nice and fresh and new. Um, and I always like to say thank you to everyone who does the work, all the volunteers that are out. We thank you so much for doing what you've been doing, many of them for many, many years. But if you don't mind plugging in, at least just for the summer, uh, because a lot of our folks are coming back down, uh, went back north or they're on vacation and different stuff. So we just need your help. So every Wednesday, 8 a.m., we'd love to have you come on out, please. Grief Share meets right here at Fellowship Church every single Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Um, if you or anyone you know has gone through that, that pain of loss, uh, we just encourage you to come on out here, get some support, get some love, uh, have people come alongside you, and when they come alongside you, you're coming alongside them as well. And you're lifting each other up in the Lord, and you're learning about your value, you're learning about how much you matter, and you're learning that you still have a purpose. So please come on out on a Wednesday night for an incredible time in God's Word, getting support from other believers. And then right after that, please stay, stay here for a little bit and have lunch dinner with us out there in the foyer at six o'clock um, with, with uh, other believers at the beginning of our Celebrate Recovery Fellowship Recovery time. 
And then after that free meal, come in here for some awesome music, time in God's Word, and then testimony time um, before they break up into small groups. And that's all about, again, getting as close to the Lord as possible to get over your hurts, your hang-ups, your addiction problems. Uh, we just encourage you to come on out and make Wednesday night a great service here at Fellowship Church. And Senior Fellowship is coming up on Thursday. We're going to have an incredible pasta dish. We'll be providing the main meal as well as dessert. Um, and we just ask you to bring a side dish that day. But also, on your way out today, please sign up on your way so you can come on out here and have a great meal with us. We're going to have some entertainment. We're going to have some fun, all for free. And uh, we just make a new fellowship friend. We'd love for you to come on out Thursday. And then on the last Saturday of the month, you need to, today is the last chance, ladies, to sign up for the spring luncheon. Uh, there's a great menu planned. I talked to Miss Pat today. You are going to be in for a treat. And uh, we just would love for you to, to sign up and get your ticket today. Today's the last day you can get a ticket for this awesome event. This coming Saturday. This coming Saturday right here at the church. If you get that ticket, it's all for free. But you got to have a ticket to come in the door. So please come on out next Saturday for an incredible event that they're working really hard to make beautiful for you ladies. We just want to love you. We want to show how much we appreciate you. And it's all, again, for free. But grab that ticket on your way out of here today. And then on the last Sunday of the month, right after the 1030 service, after this service, on the last, Saturday, uh, last Sunday of the month, we're going to have our freedom celebration right here at the church. You don't have to go anywhere else. We're going to walk right on over to those picnic tables. We're going to have an incredible cookout or a, just a fun time out with Publix fried chicken. We're providing all the sides, all the dessert. We'll have some watermelon out there. It's going to be a great time, all for free. We just want to love on you and celebrate our country and, and show appreciation on Memorial Day week. Weekend, as well as celebrate a certain Pastor Gary Clark's birthday, which is around that time as well. So please sign up on your way out for, uh, for that as well so we have enough food for everybody. We'd love for you to come on out, invite a friend. It's a great way for you to invite like your neighbor to church that, that week and then tell them what we'll give you, you know, fried chicken from Publix right afterwards, all for free. So that's a great weekend to invite somebody. And this is our town. We thank you so very much for wearing the shirts, putting on the hats, putting those bumper stickers and magnets on your cars. Uh, you're, you're having a part in someone's testimony of coming to know the Lord because those things direct them here to Fellowship Church so Pastor Gary can tell them about Jesus. So please help us out with that. Do that. Uh, the shirts are five bucks. The hats are five bucks. If you don't have the cash, we'll give them to you. We just want you to wear them when you're out and about doing your just day-to-day -day life. So please do so. We really would appreciate it. And thank you for giving at Fellowship Church. We are a debt-free ministry because of you. Give to FC.com. Many of you are using that as your tithing uh, way to, get, to give to the church. But you can also do a one-time gift. And it's just a really great, easy app to use. Uh, and we're so thankful for that. And that P.O. Box, we appreciate any notes of encouragement that you send. And everyone up north, thank you so much already for many of you who are sending notes of encouragement. And even many of you are still tithing to this church while you're back home up north. <coughs> We love and appreciate you. Have an incredible day. Happy Mother's Day again, and uh, we love you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, buddy. Amen. And we also have a special little treat for you ladies. When you leave today, you're getting something. I'm going to give you a clue. It's something I would want. So it ain't necessarily ladyish. Okay. And if you don't want it, I will be here candy and I, I can I can take them they'll they'll keep okay for a while all right but anyway we got a special gift for you all right praise the Lord are you ready Mitchell Clark Mitchell Clark Mitchell Clark come on what are you what are you doing <clears throat> come on I mean it, I give him a hard time don't I do y'all think I do or not really good Whoa. good Whoa, good yeah, there we go. That's how you go, Sherry. Good deal. Amen. You know what? Mitch and I talked this week, and we wanted to make this time right here just to maybe a smidgen more special for you. So we have two songs that they're going to do for you, and it's going to be beautiful. And uh, we're just going to, can we thank the Lord? And then we're going to turn it over to Sherry on that microphone. Let's thank the Lord. Come on. Here we go. Oh, well, I, I just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day. And uh, yeah, this is a song that we discussed doing, and both of us did this as teenagers, <laughs> as a special. I don't think I was a teenager yet. You're older than me, though. So. We are the same age. We are the same age. 
rude. <laughs> but we talked about, I said, oh, I remember doing this with my track up on the stage. And I was probably like 12 years old and I had my gum. And my mom, after I got off the stage, she was like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> But this is a beautiful song um, that comes from scripture, and it's, he gives beauty for ashes, and strength for fear. And we wanted to do this on Mother's Day because, you know, Mother's Day is a time to celebrate, but um, for some of us, you know, you've lost your mom, or maybe you didn't have the best relationship with your mom, or maybe you made mistakes as a mom too. I know I've made several. <laughs> um, so maybe it's not as joyous if you're, if you're estranged from your kids or you've lost your mom. But God can turn all of that into something beautiful. And it's just, it's just like the verse that Terry mentioned in his message. And we know that God works all things together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So on Mother's Day, we hope that even if you're grieving, Grief can hold the hand of joy and that um, beauty can come from, from something that feels a little ashen. So happy Mother's Day. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. When sorrow seems to surround you, when suffering hangs heavy o'er your head, know that tomorrow brings wholeness and healing. God knows your need, just believe what He said. He gives beauty for ashes. Strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. He gives beauty for ashes. Strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. When what you've done keeps you from moving on when fear wants to make itself at home in your heart know that forgiveness brings honest and healing God knows you're dear just believe what he said he gives beauty for rations strength for fear Gladness for mourning, peace for despair. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear. Gladness for mourning, peace for despair. I once was lost, but God has found me. I was bound up and set free. I've been made righteous in his sight A display of his splendor all can see I once was lost but God has found me I was bound up and set free I've been made righteous in his sight A display of his splendor all can see I once was lost but God has found me I was bound up and set free I've been made righteous in his sight a display of his splendor all can see He gives beauty for ashes Strength for fear Gladness for mourning Peace for despair He gives beauty for ashes Strength for fear 
gladness for mourning, peace for despair. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear. Gladness for mourning, peace for despair. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear. Gladness for mourning. Peace for despair, peace for despair, peace for despair, he gives peace for despair. Amen. Beautiful. Love that. Thank you so much. What a great song. What a great scripture. He gives beauty for ashes. But now listen, we got another song. We're going to do another one. And this is one of my, this has become one of my favorite songs. And uh, this song came out about a year or so ago. And it was sung by Zach Williams and none other than Dolly Parton. And I tell you right now, uh, I tell you, Mitch and Sherry do a, a fabulous job on this song. So I'm telling you, get ready for this song. Get ready to be excited. Get ready to be encouraged. Let's thank the Lord. Get ready. Are y'all ready? Come on, get ready. Well, there was Jesus. Come on, what a song, what a song. This song will break you right here, man. You just think about your life. You think about your life and where God has helped you to come through in life, how he was there for you. Every time I try to make it on my own, Every time I try to stand, I start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found Well, I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting like a blessing buried in broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it Couldn't see it There was Jesus For this man in need amazing kind of grace for forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay no. oh, I'm, I'm not perfect, perfect so I thank God every day there was Jesus yes, there was Jesus in the waiting in the searching the healing and the hurting like a blessing buried in broken pieces every minute every moment where I've been where I'm going even when I didn't know it I couldn't see it there was Jesus in the mountain in the valley there was Jesus in the shadow of the alleys. There was Jesus in the fire and the flood. There was my Jesus. Always is and Healing and the 
one of the best songs you'll ever hear. What a great job. You were meant to sing that song. You were made to sing that song. That's right in their wheelhouse, ain't it? Yes or no? Come on. Let's jump up on our feet. If you're able, jump up on your feet, man. Come on. Wow. Happy Mother's Day. Was that a good song for you mamas, yes or no? How many mamas would say, that is the truth of my life? That is the truth of my life. He was there. When I couldn't see it, it was a mess, and he helped me through it. Amen? Come on. That was for you ladies. Amen? I liked it too, by the way. I'm telling you that right now. We got one last song with you. Have you had a good day so far at Fellowship? Had a good day at Fellowship Church? It's good. Ain't it? Yeah, man. You might say, y'all just do this on uh, Mother's Day. No, we're this way every week. The only difference today is it's Mother's Day and my brother's going to preach. I ain't preaching today, which makes me feel weird, but I'll do it. But uh, no, it's good. You're just, you're just welcome here. I want you to come again. Come again and again. I want you. Say that out loud. I, well, I want you. We want you here. The Lord touched my heart years ago it just in just little ways. We're doing this church. I was at the high school. I was preaching every Sunday. The Lord just touched my heart and said, Gary, why don't you just tell people you want them? I want you. I want you. I want you in my life. You're a blessing. I look around. I see y'all. I see people. I've known this man for years. I want you. I want you. You hear me or not? I want to come here and look out there and see you. You know what I mean? I know I'm an odd duck. I don't give a hoot. I think people need to know they're wanted. Amen say. I love you. You know that I want you. You're a fine poet. Did you know that? This woman right here can write some good poetry. You've read some of the best poems I've ever seen in my life. It's just a truth. Thank you. You are. You are just a blessing. You are a blessing. It's crazy. Amen. I could do this all day. Here we go. Sherry was the truth. Sherry's going to lead out on a song. And I love this song. I love this song, guys. If you thought the last song was something, here's another one. Let's do it together, though. She's going to help us. If we don't know it right away, we'll learn it together. Amen. It's called In Jesus' Name. Thank you, guys. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name cause it's all that I can do In desperation I seek heaven And pray this for you I pray for your healing That circumstances would change I pray that the fear inside would flee In Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh. I speak the name of all authority. Yes. Declaring blessing, every promise He is faithful to keep. I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater, He is stronger, He is the God of possible. I pray for Your healing that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Sure. 
would change I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today right here in my heart I pray miracles over your life in Jesus name I pray for revival restoration of faith I pray that the dead will come alive in Jesus name in Jesus Unbelievable. Wow. Thank you. Both, all of you, man. Chris, Brian back there on the drums, Miss Karen over there on the piano, man. Was it, can we thank the Lord? Did we have good worship today? Say. Come on. Woo. I'm all, I'm, first service, I was all, man, I was all jazzed and ready to go after that. And I'm that way again. I get to hear it twice. That's good stuff. Well, thank you for giving to the Lord's work here at Fellowship Church. And to thank you. And I know we're, we're just different in a lot of ways. One way is different how we take an offering. You know, we still have these things. We pass them up and down. Some churches don't do that. I'm sort of old-fashioned. I like that the way we do it. But here's what we do. If you can't give cheerfully, we ask you to keep it. What does that mean? Well, that's plain English. If we want to give to the Lord cheerfully. Amen. Yes or no? That might mean a lot of things. The Bible says some people give. We don't have to do it grudgingly. Grudgingly. Uh, you know, that's sort of sad. I, guess. I mean, mad. Grudgingly. You know what I mean? And uh, he doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to. He said God loves a cheerful giver. So that's the way we do it around here. And whatever comes in will be plenty. You hear me? Can you say that? Whatever comes in will be what? It'll be plenty. Amen? If you're struggling today, the Bible says if you don't take care of your family, you've denied the faith and worse than infidel. You're not supposed to take all your money and give it to the church. That's craziness. No. If you're struggling, you can't pay your bills. You need to pay your bills. Can we say that? You need to what? What? Yeah, that's called the right thing. Amen? So that's how we do it around here. And, uh, and it's worked out pretty good. So I love that. I love that. Men tell me this is one of the favorite things they hear me say. Because men, you're like me, we're stingy. No, it's just, it's just good. It makes common sense. Amen? So thank you for giving today. We appreciate it. Appreciate what you do. And you're a blessing. Pete McCarthy, come pray for us, buddy. Come on. I love this guy. Have you noticed I love a lot of people? <laughs> buddy, you came when we were about a year into the ministry at, at the high school. Is it true? Were we at the high school for 12 and a half years? Yes, you were. And is it true that we didn't borrow any money to build this building? That's true. Did we doubt sometimes if we'd ever make it? Sometimes. You did, but I, I didn't. You never did. <laughs> you never did. That's probably true, isn't yeah. it? That's probably true. But I love this guy. Man, I appreciate you. How old are you? 83. He's a good-looking 83. Come on. You like that, don't yeah. you? You like to hear that, yeah. don't yeah. you? Yeah, I hear you. Thank you for giving today. and Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. Okay. Go get him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the mothers and all the people here worshiping you, Lord. We just ask you to be with us and bless us, and we thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ for us. And just give us your love, Lord, and be with us today, and especially bless this church and Gary and all the people here. And we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Buddy boy. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Amen. Take that with you. Don't leave that. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Hey, you that are watching online, could you send us a little note right now if you haven't done it already? Would you just say where you're watching from or a word of encouragement? Hey, maybe you love those songs you just heard. Why don't you write a little note? And I read those in about an hour. About an hour from now, I'll look over all the morning 
notes that we got online. Also, thank you for giving to the Lord's work. You're, you're a big blessing out there. You people on that online, you're making a big difference too. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. this before. Come on. (laughs) What a day. Come on. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land oh what a day glorious day that will be one more time here we go and what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see and i look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace and when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land oh what a day glorious day that will be miss karen thank you and everybody serving us Maybe I got energy because I know I ain't got to preach. I'm loaded and ready for bear. My brother Terry and I, my sister Ann, my brother Ray, my brother Kenny. Yeah, my sister's birthday is tomorrow. She's probably watching first service or this one. But there's five that are still here. My sister Janice is already on the other side with Mama. Yeah, but... uh, 30 years ago this year, 30 years ago this year, the night before Thanksgiving, my mother had gone to the little country church right up the hill. The night before Thanksgiving, had had a nice thank you service, praising the Lord. And she came home. It was in the little back bathroom of our house that we grew up in, in Rockingham, North Carolina, 109 River Road. Now that house is not there. There's a memorial there to my mother, right there on that land that the veterans of foreign war put there. And I really appreciate them for doing that. But she came home that night doing her teeth. And uh, my stepdad came in and shot her six times with a 357 Magnum, and then he sat down in the, in the room where we had eaten all our meals, or many of our meals, many of our meals, and he shot himself. And that's what my family found on Thanksgiving morning 30 years ago. So it was the hardest thing uh, that I'd ever faced in my life, and, uh, it, you know, To me, he killed, to me, the best person on the planet. That was to me. She did not always live like that, but boy, that's how she was living the last many years of her life. And boy, she was my biggest fan. And I bet you'd say the same thing, wouldn't you? 
She was our biggest fan. So to celebrate today, 30 years, the Bing Mama's Day, I thought I could preach it. I could preach to you. But I thought I might have one of the Clark boys come and talk to you a little bit. And he'll have a story maybe about Mama, but then a message. But would you welcome my brother Terry Clark all the way from North Carolina. Come on. Go get him. Here you go, buddy. Now, look, no pressure, no pressure. But, at, but. if you're too long, I'm going to go to Farlow's ahead of you. But I've said it late, so you got time. Amen. Got go get them. Hey, I love you. Love you too, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank good, you. good. All right. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Before I get started, if you're able... I'm going to ask you to please stand. Is that okay? Can y'all stand just a second? And I want you to look. It may be a mother that didn't raise you or a mother you don't know. And I want you to give her the biggest Mother's Day hug that you can do. Right now, we've got 40 seconds. Right now. Okay, are we there? Okay, you may be seated. Thank you so much. And happy Mother's Day to mothers. Mothers today, we honor you. We respect you. And we love you flat out. We love you. Why do we love you? You are the givers of life. Not eternal life. That's what Jesus does. But you're the givers of life. And you can trust what I'm fixing to say. That if all this birthing thing was up to fellas, we wouldn't be here today. There would be no human race. We can't handle the pain. But y'all do it, and you do it beautifully. And we love mothers today. Like Gary said, I'm number four of six. I'm seven years his senior. I'm not the oldest, not the smartest, not even close, but I'm way yonder the best looking. <laughs> Are you blind? It's not even close. Just kidding. I'm so glad you're here on Mother's Day. Thank you for coming to Fellowship Church. Your capacity to love mothers is immeasurable, and at times it exceeds rational thinking. And a mother will say, well, I don't think so. Well, when you have a mother that's having to be restrained because she's going to run into a burning house for that child, folks, that's not rational. That is crazy love that you possess. That's the craziest thing to run into a burning house for a young one. But you mamas, some fellas have it, but you mamas absolutely have it. You'll have to be tied down to keep you out of that house. And I'm going to talk today about some crazy love. Y'all say that with me, crazy love. I'm going to talk about that just a little bit today from the Bible. There are three types of love, philia love. The church at Philadelphia, brotherly love. Philosia love is self-love, and there's agape love, and you ladies are borderline agape. That is sacrificial love regardless of the circumstance. And it is a sacrifice to be a mother. It is a sacrifice to be a mother. Look, y'all, we don't get to choose our mama. God does that. Well, I wish I had another mama. I wish I didn't get the mama. And, you know, there are times you might think, you know, 
I didn't have a good mama. God chose your mother. It was purpose-driven that you get that mother. So before you go kicking mama, you know, I don't know that I would do that. Honor your mother. Honor your mother. He gives us the mom that we should have. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love who? God. To them that according to his purpose. So, we're never to stop honoring because it's the only commandment, which is number five, with a promise. You're going to live longer if you honor your mother and father. That's a promise. Today, we honor the sacrificial love of a mother to her child. The initiation to motherhood in itself is enough that us guys can't do it. There is an initiation to motherhood. The birthing issue is an initiation. And that's crazy. That's crazy. I do want to speak crazy love. You know not what you ask. But before I do that, I want to recognize my wife who is an incredible mother. And how can I say that? Because I've seen it for a long, long time. And why is she so incredible? Because she puts God before me. She puts God before her children. That's why she's incredible to do that. I don't know many mothers that can do that. She can. She loves him first. And you know, people, if I do that, if I put him first, she and I, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. As long as we keep him first. Not many people can say that, Gary. Crazy love. You know not what you ask. There are times when we innocently exceed the limits of human ability and we step into God territory. We try to control the outcome of some people and their lives and circumstances. We enter into situations that's too much for us to handle and we try to control issues that we should leave to God. We have a vision of how things are supposed to turn out, not just for us, but for our kids, who they marry, what career they should have what they're to be, how big a family they should have. Every parent should have a vision. I agree with that, to a point. But when your vision becomes manipulation, your child might be miserable because their vision disagrees with yours. Sometimes we all have to learn what we can control and what we can't. We'd have much more peace if we'd let God be God. Say that. Say that with me. Let God be God. Turn certain things and people over to God and say, Lord, you know how to work this out a lot better than I do. I trust you, Lord, and I'm getting out of this. I'm going to back out of it. Knowing what you can't do is great medicine. Knowing what's a God job from a mother job will let you sleep at night. In fact, Jesus said, cast all your cares on me. Don't deliver them. Throw them. Throw them. As a matter of fact, if you throw over to God what's his business, you'll be a lot happier tending your business, mama. Not trying to beat up mamas. I hope this will help a mama. Maybe you'll stop going to bed tired and waking up tired from stress. Now your preacher Gary asked me would I bring a story and I always bring a story. He wanted me to bring a mama story. And like I said in the first service it's not mama falling in the grass on my 10 speed. 
That's not the story. It's 1969, and I'm a junior, Rockingham High School. My phys ed teacher is Coach Adkins, and he's the varsity baseball coach. I didn't know at the time, but he's my physical ed, I mean, physical science teacher. He asked me after we'd been in school for a little while, he said, you're coming out for baseball, right? Somebody told me you could pitch. Honest, honest, I hadn't thought about it because I was a ninth grader. And my brother Kenny told me that only me and one other fella ever made the varsity team as a ninth grader. And for some goofy reason, I've always been able to throw a ball. I don't know. I don't know. I broke my arms when I was 10. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. But if you have any aspirations to play in the majors, you've got to break the 90-mile-an-hour barrier. Well, I could do that. I did that in Wilmington. They clocked me there. And uh, the coach told me it was either second or third inning that I was throwing 91 with control. He said, do you have any more gas? I said, well, maybe, but I don't know where it'll go. I don't know. Maybe I can throw it harder. I don't know. But I, I could break the barrier. But when I went home after the coach asked me to try out, and Mama's there, she's sitting in her recliner, and I told her, I said, you know, Coach Adkins is the coach for the baseball team. And asked me would I try out for the varsity team. And she said, but you're just a freshman. I said, yeah. That's what I told him. And she's sitting there, and she thought about me. She said, now look. She said, if you make the team, I'll buy you any glove you want. Any glove that you want, I'll buy your glove. That's a big mistake. You don't say that to me. She said, I'll buy you any glove that you want. Well, if there's any ball players here this morning, you know that's a Wilson A2000XL. I come home, that glove's 54 years old. You're not going to mess with my glove. You're not messing with my glove, okay? And I come home, and Mama is at the table. I don't know where I'd been or whatever, but this is my Mama's story. She's sitting at the table, and the top of the table is covered in change. Mom was a waitress. She had taken the shoebox out of the closet, put it all over the top of the table, and she's rolling coins into a, you know the little thing you put them in? I don't know. I said, Mom, what in the world are you doing? And she said, I'm wrapping these coins up. And we'll go to the bank, and we'll give them this, and we'll get cash. So I won't embarrass you when we go get your glove. That's my mama. That's my mama. But the real kicker here, folks, that glove right there was seventy nine ninety five, and Tony Curry didn't make us pay tax. He said it's okay. But that glove was $79.95, and the house that we were in rented for $75 a month. Is that, somebody say that's crazy love. Say that's crazy love. How many women in here this morning, you're going to spend a month's rent on a ball glove for your son to play a ball game? Are you going to do that? Well, my mama, there's one hand. You got crazy love. I'm telling you, you got crazy love, okay? <laughs> That's what my mama did for me. Did I know my mother loved me? Absolutely, my mama loved me. I'd kiss mama on the cheek. She'd be sitting in that recliner with Pat's blue ribbon every night. I'd kiss her goodnight. I'd say, I love you, and she'd say, I love you. Absolutely, she loved me. Who's going to spend a month's rent on a baseball glove? But I made the team, end of my mama's story. That's my mother.
That's my mother, and she had crazy love. And a lot of you ladies have that crazy love. Well, I'm looking now for the message. Can we do the message now? I had a pair of glasses. Excuse me. Hello? Right pocket. I'm feeling. Yay! Yay! Thank you. Got it. I only need them to see. Okay. Here we go. You know, know what you ask. You know not what you have. And we're going to look in the Bible, and we're going to come up with what I think a mother that had crazy love. Matthew 20, 17 through 23. Here we go. Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, said to them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed to the chief priests, to the scribes. They shall condemn him to death shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. We'll keep going. Then came, the, then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her boys, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. He said to her, What wilt thou? What do you want? And she says, grant that these, my two sons, may sit one on the right hand and one on the left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, ye know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And they say to him, that's got to be a misprint. Yeah, we can handle that. Really? You can really do that? And he says to them, You shall indeed drink of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with, but to sit on my right hand and on my left, not mine to give. It shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Hmm. You know not what you're asking. You know not what you're asking. Jesus has called his 12 together to give them some horrific news. It's horrible. I'm going to be crucified. They're going to mock me. That's your own people mocking you. And they're going to scourge me. And then they're going to crucify me. And I know we've been together nonstop for three years. But I'm getting ready to die. Here comes this woman. He just said he's going to die. Holding her two boys' hands. Uh, Mr. Jesus, uh, excuse me, but before you die, you think maybe you can hook my two boys up in your kingdom? Look, y'all, this is not a bad woman. She's not a bad woman. She's a good woman. She ministered to Jesus. She's the wife of Zebedee. Zebedee has a fishing business. She's affluent. She follows Jesus faithfully. She comes up and worships Jesus, but, and this is a big but, she worships Jesus with an agenda. He just said, I'm going to die. She grabs her two boys, comes, worships Jesus and says, uh, by the way, Mr. Jesus, we need a hookup. Jesus says, you don't have any idea what you're asking. And I wonder today, on Mother's Day, is there someone here asking for something that 
is not in God's will for you to have? Maybe have you taken motherhood too far? Can you do that? Can motherhood go too far? Are you mothering a grown child? Look, these aren't two little boys. They're James and John. They're grown men. When does a mama back off? Does a mama ever back off? I'm just asking. When does a mother turn the situation over to Jesus? When does she say, Lord, I'm tired. I've done all I can do. Rest is up to you. I'm done. When does a mother get like Hannah, bring Samuel to the temple, cast him on the Lord and say, his future is in your hands? Or are you going to spend the rest of your life dragging your grown kids around trying to make their story turn out the way that you want it? This is not a normal Mother's Day message. But my prayer is that it might help some mother today on Mother's Day. And you can drive a stake in it and say, that's the day that I decided that I'm just not going to do that anymore. God's going to take care of the God business and I'm going to take care of the mama business. Listen, are you stuck being a wife and a mother? If all you are is a wife and a mother, you have missed a lot. If that's all you are. Because before you were a wife and before you were a mother, you were a woman. You're more than the job you do. You're more than the children you have. You're more than the ring on your finger. You're God's woman. You're fearfully and marvelously made. With no husband, no kids, no respect, no flowers, no cards, no phone call, you're still God's woman. You are worth it. If the cards don't come, if that phone ain't ringing, if the flowers don't get there, you don't get taken to dinner, nobody puts a ring on your finger, nobody tells you you're special, you're still God's woman. It's who you are. Fearfully, marvelously made, created in Christ Jesus under good works. And if you miss this, just take your bat and go back to the dugout. You're done. You struck out. If you miss that, you struck out. And I wonder today, could I ask, what are you dragging? What are you dragging? Mother, father, what are you dragging? I ought to have the t-shirt that says, I am an enabler, because that's who I am. I'm learning. I'm learning. But folks, this mother's sons were not sick. They were already blessed. They are the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder. They're already blessed. Their father was a business owner. They're already blessed. They're in the inner circle with Jesus. They're already blessed. Jesus took them everywhere. They're already blessed. They were already blessed. And yet, here's Mama. Uh, Mr. Jesus, before you die, how about it? Is that crazy love? I would say that's pretty crazy love. She really was asking for something that wasn't hers to ask for. 
You know not what you ask. I was just wondering, could you give him a position, one on the right, one on the left? Jesus said, you know not what you ask. Jesus is going to die for the redemption of the world, and she's trying to make sure her already blessed, already exceptional, already acknowledged kids get more. I'd call that crazy love. But then I wonder, was it really for her boys? Or was it maybe for her? I'm just asking. Do we ever ask God for something that we can't handle? Should we ever be content with our blessings? Yes or no? I don't mean grow in your faith. But should we ever be content with our blessings? Anyone in this place blessed other than me? <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Or is it always about more, more, more? Are there any mothers here that could raise their hand to heaven and say, you know what? As honest as I know how, my blessings are so many, I'm thankful right now. If I don't get any more, I'm thankful today. That's rational thinking. This mother knew not what she asked for because she was distracted by the attraction of the position for her boys. But position never comes without pain. If God's going to exalt you, if he's going to raise you up in your walk and put you in a different position, there will be some pain. It won't come pain-free. You want a new home? Well, as a new homeowner, great position. Maintenance, taxes, utilities, a new car, great position. Insurance, tires, fuel, battery, a new mother. Any pain in becoming a new mother? That's pain I don't want. We want position without the pain. We want the seat without drinking that cup that Jesus was talking about. See, when he's talking about the baptism here, he's not talking about water. He's talking about death and then newness of life. Jesus told her the cost involved prior to his resurrection. He's going to be mocked by his own people, and that's the way it works. He'll be scourged, beaten near death, and then he'll be crucified, killed. She had no idea the hardship that she was requesting for her sons, even death. She didn't know. Or she didn't look in the cup. So in conclusion, mothers, happy Mother's Day. But please look in the cup before you make your request. Check out the cup, what it's going to cost, okay? Mother's Day is very well deserved. Thank you, Anna Jarvis. Mothers should be acknowledged, and we love mothers. But nothing will shake your family more than a missing mother. Your love is so deep. It's addictive to us children. We get addicted to it. We love it. So sometimes, even crazy love will move in if you ever look the cup. Preacher. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord again. Come on. Amen. It's a good word today. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. He always is different. Amen. Let's get on our feet. Hang in here and not run out on me. I got to go eat too, so you'll make it. All right? Look at her. She, she's going to eat. There we go. Here we go. Come on. Amen. 
hey, just hang in here with me. Where are you going? You never have listened. Oh, you're fine. You know, she's going to go do a little job out front. I understand. I understand. You don't want to do this to me. I'll call you right out. Hey, would y'all just look at me a minute? That message, the idea, I think you saw it. It's not that this woman didn't mean well or whatever, but sometimes mamas, we, I mean, I deal with it quite often in counseling. You love so much. You want to fix things. How many just would say you totally understand that? Yes. And you know, and it hurts so bad. You can see it as clear as crystal, as plain as a nose on your face. But you just can't make it happen, but you try. And you step over into God territory. And you're miserable. You, it just causes, and then maybe you do get your way and it didn't work out like you thought it would after that, right? Yes or no? Then you're disappointed. So it's a good message for all of us today. But here's something I want you to think about before we get done. We do that with our salvation. The truth is this. You had nothing to do with Jesus dying on the cross. None of it. God gave his son. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He says, if you will put your faith in my son Jesus, you will have everlasting life. Is that what the Bible says? But what we do, you know what we do? We go, you know, I'm good enough to go to heaven. Did it say that in the Bible? So we cross over and we make up this stuff. You get into an area you really shouldn't, you know, best thing for you to do, or, or I'll go to church, or I was baptized. That's not what it says. It says, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, said if you know it, and you shall be what? Is that what it says? So that was a good message for all of us today. But it's a good message as we close our service. We're crazy. Only crazy people would make up another way to heaven that ain't getting you there. And somehow thinking that's better than Jesus dying on the cross. We are lunatics. Y'all hear me or not? Say. And so you're at Fellowship Church today. I don't give a hoot what church you went to. If they're telling you truth, that's awesome. But if the truth ain't there, that, that's not right. So if you're here today, there's not one reason in the world why you can't leave here on your way to heaven. There's not one reason, not one. The only right way you'll leave here today not knowing you're going to heaven when you die is because of you getting in the way. And so today, would you just sort of let that message just a little bit sink in and think about it. Are you, are you, are you, are you trying to do something you ain't got no business doing? How about this? How about you just be like a little child and you come to Jesus today and put your faith in him? You ain't been put in charge of salvation. Does that make any sense? Am I a lunatic up here? So here's what the Bible says, and we'll close. The Bible says, and this is a guy who grew up in Rockingham. I did not know any Bible. Is that correct, Terry? The only thing I knew about God was a cuss word. That's it. So I'm not telling you something that's not true, okay? Here it is. If you'll confess with your mouth, you know what that is, right? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Is that that thump thing? No, it's your gut. If you'll confess with your mouth and believe down in your gut, down deep. So if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, what does it say? You shall be what? But we go, that's too easy. There you go, mama and daddy. We try to change it, don't we? We're crazy. Would you confess with your mouth today and believe in your heart that God, God raised Jesus from the dead? And would you be saved today? And when you turn that key in that car, you'll leave here going, man, I'm going to heaven. We're not trying to sell anything. We're trying to make sure you don't die and go to a place called hell. Amen.
How about we do that? Are y'all ready or not? Happy Mother's Day. This would be a great Mother's Day. Right here. Putting your faith in Christ today. Let's pray together, would you? Let's, let's, let's bow our heads, all of us. There's no reason that you have to leave lost. Jesus was mocked, he was scourged, and he was crucified, and he did raise from the dead, just like he said. And so would you believe that today? Not necessarily what a church is saying, because we screw it up, or what your mind is saying, but would you put your faith and trust in the word of the living God today, in truth, and be set free? Let's pray together. Are you ready? Just in your heart, would you nail it today on Mother's Day that I am a child of God. I'm saved. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner because you say I am. But I know I'm a sinner because I know I am. And I ask you to forgive me. And Jesus, I want you to know on this Mother's Day I'm not going to change what you say, but I'm going to do it your way. And so, Lord, I put my faith in you. I don't understand it all, but it's pretty clear. You died on the cross, you rose from the dead, and you love me. And so, Lord, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my faith in you today. I'm not in charge of all this. You are. So I'm coming as a little child. And I'm going to trust you. Come into my heart and live today through me. I'm not leaving lost. It's not happening. Thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, one last moment. How many would lift a hand and say, Pastor Gary, I nailed that today. I mean, I put that thing to rest right there. I put my faith in Christ. I love that his hand went straight up, baby. Not a problem. Amen. How many would lift that hand and say, I did that, Pastor, today. I did that. I nailed that today. I didn't screw around with this. I just nailed it. <laughs> That's what I did. I love that. Amen. Hey, well, God bless you guys. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you. Thank you for a great day. Thank you for my brother and my sister, Portia, being able to be with us today. They bless my heart on Mother's Day because I got to spend days with them. But Lord, what a good word today. Bless it to our heart. Help mothers know that being a mother is fantastic. You never called them to be superhuman. Help them also know that they have limits and you're there for them. You're there for them. They need rest, too. <laughs> they need rest, too. So would you help them, Lord? And would you help us around them to let them know how much they're loved and valued and appreciated? Help us not pour, put more on them than they need. Give us a good afternoon. And just help us have a great, great, great week. Help us to love you, Jesus, and to love people wherever we go. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord one more time. What a good day. Amen. There you go. Praise the Lord. Now, you're getting a gift on the way out, mothers. Now, remember, if you don't want it, I'll take it. All right? You remember that. But as you receive this gift today, young ladies, you get it as well. All of you.